Welcome to the GTN show. Now I am solo today, but I am not complaining because it was either run a marathon every day for a week or do this on my own. And yeah, I think I chose the easier option. Yes, Mark and James are currently trudging their way through seven marathons in this miserable December weather. But anyway, back to the show. We've actually still got some racing news, including two course records. We've got some Norwegians back on top, but not who you might expect, as well as a couple of events that are under threat. And there's also some new tech, and we're going to be easing our way into Christmas with a few fun photos. Well, it's time to take a look at what I have seen on the internet this week. You'll get to get a little insight into my Instagram feed. Um, first up, it is a couple of athletes who have been racing. We'll have more in race news, but Lisa Norden um, was just posting about her record bike split. Well, she has a race report here and she talks about how she realized the bike time was going to be pretty fast, but world record fast is mental though, in her words. Um, and she got a new overall PB, cycled a four hours 21.15 for that new world record bike split. But as we know, world records in triathlon. Oh, open for debate, but um, we'll still just celebrate that one for the moment. Also in that race was Fenella Language and she just put a lovely post saying, I won an Ironman. Now I didn't realize that Fenella has never won an Ironman. I mean, she's been in the top 10 several times at World Champs, yet hadn't actually won a standalone Ironman. So um, yeah, that's super impressive for her. Now moving to something a little bit more endurance based than an Ironman. Yes, there was the World Championship 24 hour race over the weekend. And this post caught my eye from Ultra Sophie. Um, and it's just a lot of food. She says here, what I'm going to eat for 24 hours at the World Champs, in brackets, hopefully. And I haven't actually checked in to see whether she succeeded, but her target was 75 grams of carbs an hour with a mix of solid bars, chews, gels, and jam sandwiches. And I like carb or sodium drink mix to get her 1,000 milligrams of per hour average and caffeine starting from 10 p.m. or when I get sleepy and beg for it. Now that is some packed lunch, isn't it? In fact, I don't really think there's very much in there if anything, maybe the ambrosia. And if you're not British, you probably have no idea what that is, but it's basically a pot of rice pudding that maybe could go in my pet lunch if there's a microwave nearby. But anyway, I'm not running 24 hours, so um, I don't need to worry about that, but that was very impressive. And the results actually are not yet ratified. However, there was potentially a new world record. So there's a post here um, of Miho Nakata, and it says, unofficial new women's 24-hour world record holder, distance pending 270 plus kilometers. What a strong effort she put in for the closing hours. And with that comes to the close, the IAU 24-hour world championships. Truly amazing and inspirational event that brings out the best in everyone. I mean, that would just be quite a endurance event to spectate or support, wouldn't it? So the results currently are Nakata Miho in first with 270 kilometers, um, Shvenko Elena with 254, and then Patricia Berenowska from Poland with 249 kilometers. Now the men's race was won by Sorokin Alexander, and you probably recognize his name as he has won it previously. He didn't better his record, but went again over 300 kilometers with a 301. Second, 292 was Zimmer Polos Fotias, and Chajik Andri did 284 kilometers to finish third. So um, yeah, just, mind-blowing stuff. Anyway, let's move on from something from that to something a little bit more lighthearted, which we can get our heads around. Um, this is a nice post from Lucy Charles Barkley. And I spotted this earlier in the week. She says, my Ironman World Championship winning Umeki arrived after making the long trip from Kaluna Kona. The Umeki is a Hawaiian bowl for placing your most sacred items inside. So naturally, Lola and Pickle had to be the first things to sit inside and Lola's claimed it as her bed. I think she knows just how special it is and what a journey it's been to earn it. I think that's so cool. I mean, it just shows how tiny Lucy's dogs are and how big the bowl is, but um, very cool photos and just, yeah, sheer happiness there and so well deserved. And she carries on because Lucy is making the most of the celebrations and my goodness, she certainly should be. It looks as though Red Bull put on an incredible party for her and yeah, just helped her celebrate that win after all of the hard work. So congrats to Lucy and just yeah, carry on enjoying that. Why not? I mean, it's party season anyway, let alone if you've won the Ironman World Championships. However, some athletes are not partying right now. The Norwegians, yeah, they are hard at training. We 
mentioned them a couple of weeks ago in the show when they were out training in Tenerife just after the boys had got back. Well, they've moved on now to Morocco. Um, some cool photos and Christian's just got one here saying breathtaking view. I don't know if they run all the way up those mountains, probably have, but it um, looks like it's worth it for the view from there. Talking of wonderful views, Patagonia is known for them and it's been Patagon Man over the weekend and this post here from Laura Siddle says, an adventure and race into the unknown. I'm not sure I really understood and appreciated what I signed up for or whether naivety is a good thing at these times. Tomorrow I jump off the boat in the dark into less than 10 degree water and then it rides 180 kilometers, um, which apparently the weather was supposed to be sort of close to freezing for that as well, and then runs on trails, a marathon basically. But we do um, have that in more detail coming up in the race results. This next post from Daniela Reef. Now the photo is actually old and she says here, one year ago, my family and I visited two projects in Kenya in what turned out to be one of the most impactful events of my life. Since then, I've been actively supporting two amazing local projects. I'm proud to share that we've already provided 18,000 meals for kids in the slums and assisted an orphanage children's home with food and maintenance for their small house. I'm excited to be starting a new initiative and look forward to sharing more with you soon. And there's at the Daniela Refund. I've not actually had a chance to look up um, that link, but sounds like Daniela is certainly wanting to give back into the community, which is very cool. We've seen her doing that, but probably see her doing more of that um, as she comes towards maybe the latter stages of her career. This final post um, has caught me a bit by surprise and we did mention it a little while ago. And this is about the Commonwealth Games. Now, for those of you who live outside the Commonwealth, it might not mean so much, but it is a major multi-sport championships and triathlon is included in the Commonwealth Games. And a lot of Olympic medalists have won Commonwealth medals on the way or Commonwealth goals, including Flora Duffy, Vicky Holland, just a couple that spring to mind. Um, but it's currently under threat. The BBC have just put this post saying organisers say they may have to postpone or cancel the next Commonwealth Games as apparently there are no hosts, no bids to host the Commonwealth Games at all. And um, the Gold Coast has just withdrawn its bid, leaving no other firm bids past 2020, well, up for 2026 or the 2030 Games. So not actually very far away. So that's a little bit concerning for all of the Commonwealth countries and all the sports involved. <laughs> On to Tri News now, and the Malibu Triathlon is back in the news. And you might remember quite a few weeks ago in the build-up to that race that there was a whole lot of fear that the event might not go ahead because of some fish that had come into a flooded underpass and they weren't able to change the route with last-minute last, last minute notice. However, it did still go ahead. Now, the Malibu Triathlon has, was bought by Super League Triathlon back in 2020, and they brought it back having survived COVID and have the Super League event alongside the overall triathlon. And it gives a lot of funds into the local charity. So it's a big event um, in triathlon, but also for the city and or for the area of Los Angeles. Well, it's back under threat again, and its fate is going to be decided on the 11th of December. Now, apparently, Super League might not be able to continue their license, and they have reacted with this. So the Malibu City Council is presently evaluating the fate and the decision is due and um, this is from the CEO Michael Dalston he says the council is considering three options for the Malibu Triathlon cancellation returning the event permit to MESP which is Michael Epstein Sports Productions or continuing with us returning the permit to MESP who sold it for commercial gain raises ethical concerns and necessitates a name change due to IP issues the op this option disregards our ongoing commitment to reviving the event post-COVID, the events done in fundraising and our positive community impact. Cancelling the event or transferring the permit would also diminish its significant contribution to the Paediatric Centre Research, CHLA. Now, alongside this, there's actually been an email been sent out to participants already before this final decision coming from Epstein and it says um, his email said that um, which was signed off as a CEO from the Zuma Foundation um, saying the Zuma Foundation would now be putting on the Malibu event. I wanted to assure you that triathlon is alive and well in Malibu. I want to provide you with an update on the current status and goes on to say the city of Malibu basically had this vote to form a special committee and they've had a six month review process and the unanimous decision has been to allow all interested parties to submit their proposal. And once it's now been completed, the third unanimous decision was issued by the road race committee to award the triathlon event to the Zuma Foundation, um, which does say it's still gonna raise money for the local youth initiatives and 
um, for charities. All of that said, that final decision is yet to be made, but if they do grant two permits, this will apparently cover road races or marathons and triathlons altogether. So if Epstein wins that and they have two events, it will mean that Super League, even at a different time of the year, won't be able to hold their event, which um, yeah, will be a bit of a blow to, well, to them as a business and to maybe their model, but it will just be interesting to see. So hopefully we'll be able to report back a little more on that next week. But Events seem to be under threat again. We are still sticking with events. And well, this one is actually a cancellation. So Ironman Ireland for next year has actually already been cancelled. And this is following those two tragic deaths during the race that we saw last summer. Well, this might not be a huge surprise after obviously all of that sad events happening last year and the negative press that it brought with it but also it was that whole dispute with who was responsible for the swim going ahead in those really tough conditions and whether it was triathlon ireland or whether it was ironman and i think that might be still ongoing but ironman themselves have decided not to sanction the event for next year it doesn't say it's cancelled forever it might be coming back in 2024 but they have said that this pause will allow for further healing while we spend the next year assessing the best path forward to deliver an exceptional weekend of racing once again for our athletes in one of the most passionate host communities in the world. Now, obviously, County Cork, the area which is held, is upset about this. The fact it brings in a huge amount for the economy and it's a, you know, one of the few races under Ironman umbrella that actually happen just outside of the UK um, in, the southern, in South Island. So it's a blow in some ways, but I think people will be understanding of it and hopefully they can sort out all of the dispute of going on and make a safe race that will come back in the future. Moving on to other news and the super shoe giant Nike, along with Alberta Salazar, have just settled a $20 million lawsuit with Mary Kane. Well, these allegations came to light back in 2019 when Mary Kane, an American middle distance runner, basically made these alleged complaints that she was getting abused by her coach. So she moved to Oregon to train under the Nike Oregon Project and be coached by Alberto Salazar. And you know, she suffered greatly from the way she was treated. She quoted in 2019 saying that um, emotional and physical, uh, she was emotionally and physically abused by a system designed by Alberto and endorsed by Nike. And they at the time obviously denied that and you know, the lawsuit then ensued. And actually the Nike Oregon project was shut down as a result in 2019, but now that case is closed and hopefully Mary Kane can move on with her career. And now for what the tech. We just have one piece here, but it is from an interesting brand, N Nor, which was set up by Killian Journey last year, along with the shoe brand Camper. And they have a new model, which they're calling the K Boyks. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm not exactly sure, but it is certainly unique. So this shoe comes with three interchangeable midsoles. Yeah, not three on top of each other, but these apparently are designed so you can change them depending on your body weight, the type of runner you are, and the type of terrain that you're running on. They say that they've all got different densities as a result of that so that they can suit those different situations. Um, and this is with the aim of developing a shoe that has not only a longer life cycle, which is cool, but also offers that flexibility to adapt to individuals, each individual's specific needs and the varying terrains. Well, this certainly sounds quite unique and very interesting. And they're actually opening it up to have 150 people to test these midsoles or to test these shoes. And that is still open. It opened on the 23rd of November for three weeks for you to apply. So if that's something you're curious to find out about, then I certainly would be. So that's on their website right now. And they plan to launch the shoe as early as summer next year. So I think it's really cool the fact that they're trying to extend the life cycle and make a shoe that adapts to you as opposed to having to have lots of different pairs of shoes. So watch that space. And now it is time for race news. Yes, we are well into December, but there's still plenty of racing and high quality racing at that. So we had 70.3 Indian Wells and it was a clean sweep, quite literally a clean sweep for Norway. And no, Christian and Gustav were not there. They're out training in Morocco. It was some of the younger names on the blocks which were taking the titles here. So the women's race was actually won by Solveig Losveth in her first ever 70.3, which is pretty impressive, especially if you see the field. So Tamara Jewett finished second, almost two minutes behind her um, and with an incredible run of 116.15. But that just shows the depth that Norway have. In third place, it was Jackie Herring, another four minutes behind Jewett. 
And then on the men's race, it was only the second 70.3 for Kasper Stornes, and he took the victory there. And again, a strong field. Mark Dubrick was second. And Sam Long, who won the race last year, actually finished third. So um, just showing what Norway have coming through. And it's interesting when you look at the, the past winners, when you look back through this race, it's actually been North American winners on the men's side. So Lionel Sanders won it from 2018 through to 21. Then it was Sam Long and then Casper Stornos in one of the quickest times we've seen there. And obviously on the women's side, actually it was Chelsea Sodaro who won it back in 2018. And it was a, a chop and change between Americans and Canadian winners with Paula Finley, then Danielle Lewis, and then Paula Finley again. So Norway bucking the trend there. And when I said a clean sweep, there was also an age group race. And the Norwegian coach, Mikael Eden, raced in that and won the overall age group title. So um, a pretty successful weekend for those guys, for sure. And um, hopefully they'll be celebrating now as it comes towards the end of the season. A couple of athletes who most certainly will be celebrating and have very much finished their season over at Ironman Busselton or Ironman Western Australia. Well, the women's race was won by Philella Language, as we touched on earlier in the React section. Now, she had a strong swim. She broke away with Lotta Wilms. Lisa Norton didn't manage to stay with those two athletes. And it was actually the strong bike of Lisa that came through the field. She passed Fenella at about 100k and then went into the lead and maintained that lead on the way to getting a bike record overall with a 421, like we touched on. But then the heat started to, to get to her. And both her and Fenella talked about how brutal the conditions were. The course was pan flat with no let up at all. And the heat was rising. And um, yeah, basically, Lisa started to struggle on the run. She had to walk and she's looked at her data since. And it shows how her core temperature really did peak. And she needed to try and bring that down. But Fenella language, all the this time training out in Australia has obviously paid off as she managed to maintain her cool, so to speak, and come through the latter stages of the run to take her debut win. So a lot to celebrate for Fenella Language, finishing off her season, a very long season at that, having not been home since Hawaii. And she'll be going back with an engagement ring on her finger and a Ironman title. So a lot to celebrate for Fenella and her team. Lisa Norden finishing second, still in a very quick time of 8.33, which was a personal best for her. Lotta Wilms finishing third and just off the podium, Els Visser, who you might remember last week, had that battle with Fenella and that slightly pukey sprint finish where she managed to just outrun Fenella in that sprint finish, but um, not her day exactly, but still a very strong performance for her in the full distance. And then the men's race was won in a new course record again by Daniel Backergaard with just a very solid overall performance and um, finishing with a 237 run in that heat, which was quite incredible. Ahead of Matt Burton in second and Nick Thompson in third. And again, and I was just having a quick look back through the previous results. So you might remember the course record actually was broken by Alistair Brownlee back in 2019 when he had a phenomenal race. But to give context, that was a 7.45.20. Uh, the last winner was 2022 was Max Newman in, as again, a 7.45.21, one second off that course record. And now Daniel Backergaard went a 7.34.23. So taking over 10 minutes off, which is Pretty crazy. Um, on the women's race, or the women's side, the course record was previously 8.38 by Theresa Adam in that fast 2019 year. And um, Fenella Language went to an 8.29.43. So both of those records absolutely, yeah, totally obliterated. So well done to those guys. And I'm sure they are very much looking forward to an off season now. And Daniel Backergaard did make some allusion to the fact that he might be adding some alcohol to his Red Bull um, instead of purely using it for fueling. Um, I like that. One final race, uh, Patagon Man, the absolutely crazy Ironman distance race down in Patagonia in those brutal conditions like we talked about from Laura's post. Now, probably not really a surprise, but still an incredible performance. Uh, Laura Siddle took the women's win and she actually came second overall. Uh, there's actually a funny um, post here where... Um, I think they weren't quite expecting her to finish so soon and the gates were still closed to the finish and she had to ring the bell and then come back around. But um, still, I think she just thoroughly enjoyed herself. The men's race was won by Jan Stepinski as well in a time of nine hours, 16 minutes. And it looks as though the sunshine did come out and it did warm up a little bit. As much as we are almost midway through December, there's still a bit more racing coming up. We've got 70.3 Bahrain, which has a pretty strong lineup, as well as 70.3 Taupo and Challenge Salinas. So keep watching for next week. 
And onto the best bit, your photos. And I alluded to earlier that we're easing ourselves into Christmas. And it seems you guys are easing yourselves in as well because we've still got quite a few photos coming from last week's theme. But first up, we do have our very first Christmas themed picture. And it's a great one to get us going from Rolf M. And it's in Lake Maggio in Northern Italy. And it's starting to look a lot like Christmas. The picture is from an open water Christmas swim Ah, on the 24th of December, a few years ago, I see. The water held seven degrees and it was a short swim. I would guess so. I mean, it's got a wetsuit, but it doesn't look like thermal. Um, so hopefully as you guys start to get into your Christmas spirit, we will get a few more Christmas photos, but you know what to do. You can share them using the uploader. We look forward to those, but there's still a few that were just really great from last month that have just trickled in in time, which I want to share. This one from Aaron Vince, um, and this is, his cesspool oh, marathon bike, sorry, post crash and retired to the trainer. Now he's in Chakes forever in Hungary. This is actually somewhere we used to go for pentathlon, which is quite bizarre. Um, says, I'm making my homemade isotonic probiotic recovery drink. I like the way you've worded this. The process is quite a lot of empty time I can spend on the trainer. The location is our summer kitchen still under renovation as both the brewing process and the trainer are better kept out of the house. Yes, for different reasons, I'm sure, but probably wise. And that really does look like a science experiment going on in the, the summer kitchen, as you call it. I love that. That is a great way to spend your off season. Um, we have another few photos here from Gabby in Canberra. Now she says, Heather, sorry, not knitting, but here is some of the sewing and other crafting that I did over the off season in Australia. I even got the triathlon faux leather, especially printed. I mean, this is skills. Wow. I'm, I'm loving this. I'm loving the little like wash bag with the swim caps and bicycles on. Oh, and trainers. I didn't even realize that until I looked closer. Um, you guys are pretty talent, talented out there. I mean, I haven't tasted the beer, but the, the pictures look great from um, all of those bags. Nice stuff. And finally, this one from Tatiana. Uh, she says, Barcelona versus Cape Town for the locations. What better than off-road to escape the hard train required for a full Ironman? Just not sure if I chose the right challenge. And I think these are pictures from Cape Epic. So obviously a little while ago, the thing that I love most though, is, yeah, so Cape Epic 2023 are her nails. She's got Cape Epic, 658 kilometers, 15,775 meters, and a little bike wheel and another bike on her fingernails. So um, good skills with that. And yeah, well done for um, completing Cape Epic, an awesome event. Say what? That's much harder on my own. Um, I hope I didn't blow your ears out. Anyway, right, some comments that I have spotted beneath a couple of our videos. A couple first from Sam Laidlow's Hardest Workout. And you can guess who took that one on. Yeah, it was Mark. He did that in Tenerife. And um, Yini one says, wow, I think Mark is a stronger athlete than any of the GCN presenters. Now, I wasn't really sure how to take this because of course he is. I mean, I'd like to say we all are, but Mark most certainly is. So um, yeah, give him some kudos for basically taking on 21 1Ks. Um, yeah, looks pretty horrific. Uh, Zat underscore Zamabund says, fun video, amazing effort, and Mark starting too fast. Classic GTN. But seriously, massive kudos, Mark. I mean, yes, Mark does have a reputation for starting too fast. I'm not sure it's classic GTN. I think it's more classic Mark, but I won't be offended by that one. Um, but yeah, like I said, I'm giving Mark massive respect for doing that. And Mark and James are currently being out there in the cold whilst I'm enjoying the warmth. Uh, there was one other comment which caught my eye actually underneath our Christmas wish list video. And this comes from Lizzo Beach and says, love the sign behind Mark telling people to put their dishes in the dishwasher. Cracked me up. Well, yes, I love how observant you guys are. And yes, it is sad. We have to admit that we do need reminding to put our dishes in the dishwasher. Anyway, thank you for staying with me for this solo effort. If you have enjoyed it, do give us a like. And as obviously, Plenty of exciting content coming up, including a bit of a marathon video. Yep, the boys are still out there working hard. But this weekend, we have a bit of a fun Christmas-themed challenge where we kind of flip the camera. Yep, the guys filming who are sat behind the camera right now are being challenged by us, but they do get to edit it. But we will check that they are true to that one. So keep an eye for that. And if you want something to watch now, well, I would suggest checking Mark out doing Sam Nadlow's Toughest Workout.